do you pass up the opportunity to spit blood in Joan Baez's face? Face, face, face. <laughs> Hey, what's happening to Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast? Let me tell you this, folks, uh, and you can take this to heart and own this and keep this in your, your little lockbox forever. If you thought last week's episode didn't count, well, I'll tell you what, this, this episode truly doesn't count against your yearly data. Um, I, I, this is, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to wind up just making a year of podcasts that don't count, uh, which, which by the way, which by the way is my favorite Christmas special. I'm not going to lie to you. I, you know, the year without a Santa Claus can fucking fuck off right out of here. It was the year of podcasts that don't count. Um, I wish I could explain to you what the fuck is happening because this is a podcast about my life. And the last thing you want to hear is me again, peeling the onion on my brain. So I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm just going to tell you that uh, I'm, I'm, we're putting the show out again on a Thursday and I, I am uh, trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with me. And eventually we'll figure it out, right? Won't we do that? We'll sit down together around a campfire and we'll have s'mores. With no marshmallows, because I don't like marshmallows, but I, but there's nothing worse than uh, just chocolate on graham. I can't imagine a chocolate on graham s'more. It's not really a s'more. I guess that's a sore, you know, because the M's gone. Get the, get the M right out of there. The mar- take the marshmallow out of that equation, and you're just left with a sore, an open sore of graham cracker and oozing chocolate. Oh, put some Bactine on that because it's going to heal up pretty quick, but choke it down your throat as well. Oh, Bactine, maybe I make a spore. We, put, we substitute the marshmallow with Bactine, and we just go chocolate, graham cracker, and Bactine. Mmm, that, that's a delicious snack. Uh, my skull is, uh, is constantly reverberating with things, and I don't know what to do, and I give myself permission to fail, and that's why we're putting this out again on a Thursday, because yesterday I sat and stared at a microphone and thought to myself, you know what, I should do a show, and looked and stared. I, even, I didn't even stream yesterday. I was like, you know what, I got stuff I got to do. I got business. And then I wound up having a thing to do last night. I had a meeting, and, uh, and then I'm here doing this. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm not, you don't, this is not a week to tell you about my life. All right. So, so let's do this. Let's, let's, you know, let's do something fun. Let's have a fun exercise, right? Let's do that. Let's, uh, maybe I'll make this a Twitch throwback Thursday episode, depending on how much I can squeeze out of my fucking cerebellum and see what I can make you guys listen to. And then, uh, and, and look, I recognize how desperately close I am to losing all of you. I know this. I, uh, Eventually, you're going to tire of this. You're going to say, you know what? We can't be there and listen to Mike as he fucking shovels himself out of whatever grave he's put himself into this week. I don't know. Why did it take 11 years to get to here? I, I, I don't because I'm alone. I think it's because I'm alone. Who knows? You don't care. Nobody wants to hear me do this. And I, I want to stop making myself do this. Let's not do this, right? Let's not. Let's just let's shake hands. Let's look each other in the eyes and just have a spore. Let's do that. Let's just get ourselves a goddamn spore. Spore? Why do I, why do I call it a z? z-, z-? It's not an S. Uh, that's a Z. Oh my God. Have I put a Z in there? Um, folks, let's have a fun exercise. Let's do that. And then we'll put in an episode that everybody used to enjoy from back when I was good at this. Uh, and I had, I had all the potential in the world when I was looking forward in year one and going, Oh, look at me start a podcast and being an innovator. And now here we are in year 11. And I'm also innovating again in year 11 by, by not putting out podcasts in a timely fashion. Although I guess I didn't innovate that. I think everybody has perfected that over the years. I'm just catching on. That's a late trend I'm catching on to. That's me just surfing on the backs of people who've gone ahead with the hard work of never putting out a podcast on time. And look at me, I'm going, you know what? I can do the same exact thing after years of being diligent and making sure that I got this out because it was the only thing I had in my life. I've now come to the point where I, I can't even force myself to do that. I can't put a can opener into my fucking skull and crank it open and let ideas fly the fuck out because instead I sit here and I stare. I stare at audacity. I stare at the gray, the, the endless gray area. Because right now there's blue lines. Blue lines mean there's a show being uh, produced, and that's fine. But when there's just gray area and you stare at it, just it's like looking at a blinking cursor when I was a writer, when I was a writer back in the day. When I, when I was, I mean, I'm still, I still write. I've written on occasion. I've written a tweet or two. I've written a, a letter, an email, a letter, a, yeah, a letter. That's who I am. I'm John Adams. I'm just fucking, I'm handwriting calligraphically a letter to you and stamping it with wax and sending it off. 
uh, I have to film a thing tomorrow and I, I don't think it's going to be good. I've, I'm very worried about it, but that's okay. I've, I've committed to do it. And so we'll see what happens. Um, I know that seems vague. <laughs> I have a buddy of mine who's doing like a documentary thing and, uh, and, and it's, and good for him, but then he wants me to be a part of it. And I'm like, I, I don't know why you want me cluttering up your fucking documentary, but all right, we'll try that. Um, it's a fo- it's a fo-cumentary. fo it's a, it's a faux documentary. I don't know how you would call that. Look, I'm not a fucking filmmaker. I'm not that I'm barely a podcast maker these days as I sit down to shovel you guys some sort of fucking information that you can go ahead and take this week to next week. Um, but again, this week doesn't count. So you know what? All the pressure's off. Maybe that's what I got to tell myself. These uh, fuck numbers, fuck symmetrical listings of episodes in numerical order. I'm going to go ahead and just do episodes that don't count. I'll just fire up episodes on a Tuesday or maybe a Sunday. Who the fuck knows? They'll just come flying at you, baby. It's just, it's just like, you know what you are? You're an egg. You're an unfertilized egg. And I'm just fucking machine gunning word sperm at you and trying to fucking make you into a baby. Let's make a podcast, baby. You're an unfertilized egg. I'm just fucking machine gunning word sperm. And let's make a goddamn podcast, baby. I must go in vitro with you motherfuckers. There you go. I'm just swimming up your vaginal canal and and trying to get your birth canal, whatever the fuck. Look, I'm not going to pretend that I know anything about ladies' parts. Uh, I know where the important stuff is on the outside. On the inside, it's a goddamn mystery. It's like a goddamn, uh, it's it's a treasure box that I can't figure out. Um, So you know what I need to do? I need to just reach in there and pull out a treasure. What do you say? Uh, That's not good porn. Um... I, 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 look, we've all seen fisting porn, right? Haven't we? What if I did that? What if this show just deteriorated into that? I pivoted around to a goddamn fisting porn discussion. Nobody wants that. You'd rather hear me talk about eating Bactine. Is that a bad thing to eat? Probably. I would imagine just the name alone doesn't sound appetizing. Visine, Bactine, anything with an een in it, I'm not going to eat. And I, I know what you're thinking. You're like, what about a terrine of pork? A pork terrine. I'm going to say, fuck that, man. I don't eat anything with an een. I can't eat an een. What about a nectarine? Nope. Tangerine? Nope. That's just some sour sound and fruit that I don't want to choke down my gullet. If you've got an Ean, I'm not eating you. Uh, Afro Sheen, I will not eat that as well. Martin Sheen, Charlie Sheen, none of those guys are going in my throat. Uh, but if you're a lady with an Ean, perhaps I'll eat you. Oh, what does that even mean? Mean, ha <laughs> that's mean. Um, you know, this is, this is, uh, all right, let's do something fun. Let's just, let's just distract ourselves from the fact that I'm not doing a real show and a show that doesn't count. And let's do something fun. Here's a fun exercise. I'm, I've decided on this, uh, because someone was right. Cause I, in my brain, I actually thought about writing something this week. How fun is that? I was like, maybe I'll sit down and write a piece. And I'm like, why would you write a piece? Nobody wants to hear that because you can't even talk. Uh, but I can talk. See, as I'm doing, I'm talking now. All right, here's the deal. I don't know if you guys saw this in the news. Uh, oh my God, who am I? Now I'm a comedian. Now I'm, now I'm late night Jones. Hi, how you doing? Hey, what else is going on in the news? Shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. Talk about something that makes sense. Uh, uh, it's warm in Los Angeles. It is very warm. Although it's not warm today because it's Thursday. Yesterday it was like 95. It's been 95, hundred for like a week, which is great. I know you're thinking to yourself, Mike, that's bad. No, no, fuck that. I love heat. I love hot weather. You know what? I really love hot weather. Get this. Oh my God. I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to reminisce about a, a time. And the last time I can remember something like this. I like at night when it's hot. I know that sounds uh, not good when you're trying to sleep or whatever the fuck, but I don't care. I just sleep with no covers on. It's fucking awesome. And a fan blowing right on me. It's the best. Uh, But I love when it's hot during the day, like 100 degrees, but then at night it only cools off to like 88. But there's still kind of a breeze and it has that desert feel to it. Oh, dude, is there anything better than that? I mean, I like fall, certainly. I like like that very much, but, but when it's... 88 degrees. One of the fucking coolest things. Here's, here's two things I'll reminisce about. Uh, one, uh, I don't want to reminisce too much about this, but I, uh, when I was driving from Chicago, uh, actually from like from Wisconsin back to here, when I bought my car, um, and then we were driving back, it was me and my ex, and uh, we stopped in Needles, California. And uh, and it was, God damn, it was... It was it was so weird. Like it wasn't even planned. We were just doing this thing where we stopped. We stopped in Oklahoma. We were stopping, you know, it's that thing is you can't drive straight through. And, um, and we were stopping at hotels and, and whatever, hitting a hot tub and, and destroying hotels. And that was fun. Um, but we went to needles, California and, and it was so fun for two days that we decided that it was going to be a stop that we made forever. Like there at some point, cause needles, dude, let me tell you, needles is nothing but meth and sun. That's all it is. It's fucking, it's incredibly baking heat. Like it, it, by me, if it's a hundred, it's 112 in needles. I mean, it is just really fucking hot, but it's this strange, 
Like when we stopped there, it was crazy hot. It was like 113 degrees. Okay. But because it's, it's in the desert, it's this, it's really dry and it doesn't feel super intense. Like I, I can't explain it. We put sunscreen on, we wound up staying at the only hotel in needles that was, that seemed to be nice. And it had a pool and it had a fucking hot tub and it had a fucking steam room, like a spa steam room. And, uh, and look, it's, it's not healthy for me to, to do this, but it was fucking great because, uh, we were the only people in the hotel. So like, uh, my ex sunbathed like topless and swam in the pool topless. And I remember looking and going, Oh my God, it was just, uh, 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 <laughs> it was pretty fucking great. And, uh, and we just laid out at the pool and then we went up in the hot tub. And, uh, because again, there was nobody there, uh, th- there was stuff going on that probably shouldn't have gone on in the pool or the hot tub, but I don't, I don't get, it was fucking, it was two days of that. There was one restaurant needles that we ate at we, and we drove around. We actually drove around needles to look at all of the, cause it was that place where it, it, you know, this, if you live in Arizona, it's so fucking hot. All of the buildings are white. And everything is baked out. It's just the color is completely washed out of the entire fucking area because the sun has cooked it in such a fashion that you can't have any color. You can't have any expression. You don't want, you don't want any, anything at all to attract the, the heat. So everyone paints their house with that, like uh, almost anti-radiation colors at that point. Cause you're like, you know what? We got to do something to try to deflect whatever heat there is. And it's, uh, it's just a fucking it's a last chance opportunity that town, you know, it's a lot of fucking these, these really small shacks with fucking window air conditioning units. And we drove around and we drove around the entire town cause there's nothing there, man. And it was just that thing where you, you just look and you think, man, the people here are on the run. Anybody who lives here is, is you would never choose to live there. That's where you end up. My friend, Sam used to do a joke where he said, uh, he, he said, nobody, nobody chooses to live in Blythe, which is a town that's on the way to Vegas. He says, that's just where your car broke down and you got tired of waiting for parts. And so then you just decided to start a new, a new life there. And it's, and there's no doubt if you're in needles, you are just, uh, I get, let me put it this way. If you live in needles, I guarantee you that it's somewhere in the country, if not the world, there is, there is a warrant out for your arrest. There is something, you've done something that you have to live on the surface of the sun in a shack with a, with a window air conditioning unit, one restaurant, nothing else. It's literally just highway. That's, it's just fucking highway. But we loved it. I mean, we, it was so hot and the hotel was nice and uh, the room was nice and the room, the air conditioning was like fucking, it was, I think it was just the whole how perfect it was to be 114 degrees. It keeps going up one degree every time I talk. I recognize that, but it was, it was just right in that area. It was, it was in the teens, 110 teens. And, uh, you know, and, and 110, maybe I, I, whatever the fuck I didn't look, I didn't have a thermometer in my ass. Uh, and, and quite frankly that over those two days, that's the only thing I didn't have in my ass. Ha brace yourselves. Um, uh, that's probably a lie because <laughs> right now a lot of you are like, is he fucking serious? Is that a true thing? Um, no, but I can, I can remember, and this, and this is a lot of the problem with my head these days. I, I, I'm romanticizing this experience and I'm, I'm thinking of, of times that I, that I, where I thought everything was perfect and I know that those are gone now and I'm trying to, uh, fix my head and it's, it's taking years and I don't know why I I don't know why. And, uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, it was, it was an amazing two days. It was because again, it was, there was nothing there, uh, but us. So that was all we had. And the sun was intense, but it didn't matter. We went to the pool and we went um, to the one restaurant and, and it was, it was so funny. It was, it was so perfect at the time that in my brain, I was like, yeah, I would, I would escape to here and I wouldn't, you know, if, if we just hid here forever, that'd be fine because maybe then, you know, nothing could touch us. Nothing could happen. But of course those are silly ideas and they make no sense. So, uh, but boy, was it, but it was super hot 
and it, and it was it was hot in in literally and figuratively for two days, and it was just a really uh, amazing time. And so so I I that at night it was a hundred degrees, you know, in the daytime, like I said, it was like one ten or whatever the fuck. But even at night it was like 98 and that, that it was so hot. You could hear it. You know that. And, uh, you know, that experience when you walk outside and you, you, you can almost, you can just hear it. Cause you can hear air conditioners humming. And, uh, it was, it was a fantastic time. And I, I so I love that. I love nighttime heat. And I've just always loved that. Another time it happened was um, I did a show in Austin, Texas. And it was at the Cold Town Theater. Might have been the first time I went to Austin. I've been there a couple of times. I think it was the first time. And it was so, yeah, it was, it was absolutely the first time because it was so unbelievably hot. But it was that soupy hot. You know, that Texas hot. It was probably like 96, 98, but it was humid. So you just, you, it was like walking around in a fucking swimming pool. I mean, it was just crazy. But then I did the show. And of course, at the end of the show, I'm covered in sweat. You know, I'm just, I'm, cause I'm sweating cause it's hot, but also I'm doing a show. I'm, I'm on stage three hours, whatever the fuck. And then afterwards I went out, I wound up going out with, uh, David and Erica listeners to the show who were very nice. And I can remember being in the parking lot, um, we wound up in some, I don't even know what it was, some restaurant or something, but it was, we were in, then I had to go to the hotel and just being outside at, uh, at 1130 at night, but it's, but it's still 90 degrees and humid. And, and it's, I know that sounds unpleasant and I know it sounds like something you don't want to experience, but trust me, it is a, uh, for me, I, I love it so much. Nighttime heat, daytime heat, I like, you know, I'm, I, I like heat. I like being hot, which is strange being a fat dude. Cause you would think, oh man, this guy's sweaty and uncomfortable the whole fucking time. Well, I mean, sweaty perhaps, but not uncomfortable. I mean, I, 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 I live for it. I love hot. I'd much rather be hot than cold. I'd much rather be intensely hot than, than cold. And, and do I like fall? Certainly. Do I like that middle ground? Of course I do. As you all know. I mean, I told you that's when you go ahead and build a fire. You start making those sores. <laughs> Cause I'm not having a B baby or an M I'm having a B now back teen, not a marshmallow. Um, that, that's, that seems like it should be the name of the show, right? Back teen, not a marshmallow. Let's go ahead and write down the time code here. All right. How you doing everybody? Uh, I, I, cause I didn't even know what I was going to do here. I'm just opening it up when we're talking. We're just, uh, well, it's just, it's, it's a weird time for me to just start talking because I, uh, I, there, <laughs> the only thing I want to talk about I, is the thing I'm trying to not talk about. It's fucking stupid. All right. Um, I have to fix my life and my head. I have to fix my head. You don't care. Uh, but in Texas, man, I remember we were walking, we were in the parking lot. It was me, Erica and David. And, and it was just, again, the heat you could hear almost like you're not even just the air conditioner hum, but also like that that, that cicada noise, you know, that like, it's just, it's almost like the static on an old LP. When you drop the needle, you just hear the fucking crackles and pops. So you can hear that when the heat outside, when it's really warm and I, I love it. I live for it. Or even, even to go this route when it's hot and silent, when it's just that, that, and that's what it's been here the past week. I'm, I have all the windows open in my house and the door and, uh, and I'm just listening to nothing. And, and you know, that's, that can be dangerous because it sends you off, uh, thinking and, and, uh, reminiscing about what things we've just reminisced about. And, and I need to, I, I just, I, uh, <laughs> I want to look forward. I really do. I mean, I really do. I don't know why. I, I mean, whatever. I saw Shannon and, uh, and she and I talked and she's, she recommended some stuff and, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I do know, but I, I'm not going to torment you fucking guys with it. So that's that. Hey, <laughs> podcasts. This one doesn't count again. Please, please know it's the year of podcasts that don't count. <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right. So let's do an exercise. Let's do something fun. Let's go ahead and do anything to get our minds off fucking being who we are. Let's stop being us for just a second. 
Um, but that's not fair. I like being us. I like being me. I need to, I just need to be a better me or need to, to take that next step to being a different me. Hi. Fuck. Let's do this exercise because this will be fun and this isn't about real life. Let's do something that's not real life. Let's go ahead and reach out and stop talking about the fucking ping pong and the maze that goes in our brain. Let's not be in the rat trying to get the fucking cheese. There's no fucking cheese, man. We're going to go all the way through the maze and find at the end there's no fucking cheese, baby. Hi, I'm crazy. Uh, you know, this week, as I hit the microphone with a pen, this week as I, I apparently into a, <laughs> I lapse, I lapse into a David Letterman thing when I'm, uh, when I'm this guy. Um... You know what happened this week? First of all, I, uh, uh, what the fuck? Nothing, nothing happened this week. Did you guys see the story that Justin Bieber challenged Tom Cruise to a fight? All right. The reason this is a thing to me, uh, if you did not see it, uh, Tom Cruise, uh, Justin Bieber, both of those fellas, those young fellas, those good guys. <laughs> um, apparently Justin Bieber tweeted out that he wanted to fight Tom Cruise in the UFC octagon and he wanted Dana White to promote it. And I don't think Tom Cruise responded, which is unfortunate for all of us, quite frankly. Uh, I think a lot of this, you know, took place with Celebrity Deathmatch, and then they wound up having Celebrity Boxing on Fox, where people actually contemplated these ideas as something that could be possibly something that would happen. But also, I will tell you this, uh, in 2007, I was on a podcast called Never Not Funny. And on that podcast, I advanced the theory that it was time for this to happen. It was time for real people to fight real people. And, uh, and I frameworked it in the, in the, uh, in the matchup of Jet Li versus Chuck Norris. And as Matt Belknap, the producer and Jimmy Pardo, the host, uh, and driving force behind never not funny sat wrapped at a, at a kitchen table on the corner of movie star and dicey. I advanced the theory that perhaps, uh, Jet Li should fuck up Chuck Norris because you know what? It was time to do so. It was just fucking time. Jet Li's a badass martial artist and he was becoming uh, known on the scene. He'd been known certainly up to that point. But I was like, why doesn't he just fuck up Chuck Norris? Like in real life, like really fight him because everybody, everybody still thinks Chuck Norris is a tough guy. That's the whole thing. Of course, that meme went around where Chuck Norris will, uh, st- you know, he, the knight asks for permission to, to, to crest because Chuck Norris says, yes, whatever the fuck, all those silly things that became a calendar, every other fucking thing in the world where everybody was like, hey, yeah, Chuck Norris is the toughest guy in the world. And I was like, Jet Li's got to be fucking sick of hearing that. So I said Jet Li should challenge Chuck Norris to a fight, like in real life a fight. And, and Jimmy's theory was that that shit isn't real and that shit never happens and it shouldn't happen. And I was like, no, dude, here's the thing. And I said, what if in real life Jet Li called out Chuck Norris? Because Chuck Norris is a real life tough guy. There's no, I mean, it's not, he's not like a movie tough guy. Like, I don't know how tough Keanu really is. You know, it's a lot of John Wick stuff and he's trained and he's learned a lot of stuff, but, but he, could he, could he really, could he fight? Chuck Norris and wind up winning. Although Chuck Norris is now old and wig clad. I mean, it's just, it's just, who knows? I have no, I don't want to speculate. I like to think that Keanu could handle himself in a throwdown with Chuck Norris. I like to think that I could handle myself in a throwdown with Chuck Norris at this point, just on sheer size alone. Uh, and also he's an old man. He's doing push ups with a wheel. I mean, I know that fucking guy isn't going to fucking get out of his own way. And I wind up in a fucking fight. Maybe I'll just charge him and put him on the ground. See, that's the whole thing. You got to take him off his feet. We learned this from the UFC. The Ultimate Fighting Challenge had karate guys against boxing guys, against jujitsu guys, against uh, uh, Joe Sando guys, against street fighting guys. Whoever the fuck wanted to enter this goddamn thing uh, was willing to do it. As a matter of fact, by, my friends, we entered me in, in the second UFC. We tried. We sent in an application online praying that I didn't get chosen. Uh, but, but at the time, there was a thing you could fill out an application online in the early days of the internet in the early days of the UFC and, and throw yourself in the middle of the fight. And we just thought it would be funny. We All we were thinking about was the entrances. That was it. The entrance to the octagon and, and the decrees, all of these different things we came up with. The entrance music. That's the important thing to me in a fight. Entrance music and the entrance with me and my boys. Now, I, would I get into the octagon and get fucking ruined? Of course I would. There's a lot of there's a lot of mystery badasses out there who would fucking ruin you in a goddamn physical altercation. And the problem is now there's even more because of the UFC and because of Fight Club and things like that. Everybody has trained themselves to within an inch of being able to murder you at any second. So the good old days of just being able to get into a scrap of the guy and it lasts about 30 seconds and you either fucking take him down or knock him out or whatever the fuck. That, those are long gone. Now... I must say violence, I've lost, uh, I've lo- it's lost some of its sheen for me. I've talked about this before. In the last five or six years, as I've gone ahead and gone to therapy and learned a lot about myself and, and uh, things, I've I become less, 
keen to thinking about violence as a solution for anything. And, and it, it wasn't ever a solution, but it was like whenever violence would happen around me when I was bouncing or in, a, in any public uh, area, I, I would I would want to get involved. I would want to throw myself in. I, I was in a huge gang fight in a theater once. But then I was in a mall and there was a fight that broke out. I was with my ex-wife and we walked off the other way. I was like, and I felt so emboldened. I felt so empowered by being able to walk away from that situation. It felt great. And I can't express to you how different a feeling that was for me from the past when if there was violence, I had to be involved. And I'm not even, uh, how do I put this? I'm not even tough. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not like if you threw me into a fucking, like a, uh, I mean, I, I'm one of those dudes like I'm big. I'm not even, I might be strong from lifting, but I mean, I'm not tough or, or I don't have technique. You know, my, my technique is being big and landing shots on you, getting in close and getting my hands on you and taking you down and using my weight to keep you down. And then just fucking elbowing you in the face. I mean, that's just, that's not technique. That's hope. That's literally hope that I don't get fucking pieced apart by leg kicks and whatever else the fuck you're going to throw at me and I can get my hands on you. But also I'm going to be 52 in July. I don't, I don't ever want to do that ever again. I don't want to fight anybody. I don't want to fight. I'm gonna, I, I'd love to go take jujitsu and I'd love to spar in class, but I don't ever want to fight anybody for violence. Here's why. I'll tell you this. I see this stuff um, online now, and a lot of it has happened with social media. And uh, there's some, I don't know, some rapper. I don't even know who the fuck he is. Da Baby. I, maybe that's his name. <laughs> I don't know. But I saw a clip where he's like in a jewelry store and like two dudes roll up on him with their phone on and they just start talking shit to him because I guess he's proclaimed himself super tough online and like, yeah, you know, he's roll up on me and you'll get the strap or whatever the, I don't know, whatever these fine gentlemen have gone ahead and had discourse about. Uh, but he's basically proclaimed himself that he's, he's ready to fuck anybody up at any time. And so these dudes show up in a jewelry store and this is along the lines of my Jet Li and Chuck Norris, but on a, a much lower level, like The theory for me with Jet Li and Chuck Norris was Jet Li has established himself as a martial arts movie star and people would still mention Chuck Norris and Jet Li's just got to be fucking sick of it and go, you know what? Fuck this. I'm fucking Chuck Norris up. I'm taking his heart so everybody can see that he's no longer the guy. And put me in the memes. Make me in the memes, damn it. And uh, and so I speculated that if Chuck Norris was at Friday's having lunch and then he was to look out the window and there was Jet Li who just pulls up and gets out of his car in like the Jet Li uh, in the uh, Bruce Lee tracksuit the uh the the gold you know like the the bride wore it in kill bill the yellow tracksuit with the black stripes and if somehow jet lee were to show up wearing the wearing the game of death tracksuit and he was going to point at chuck norris through the window of fridays and call him outside to fight and chuck norris is there just trying to have uh you know potato skins or a blooming onion or whatever the fuck else they serve at fridays and he sees jet lee and he's not prepared for this activity at all but you have to go out there. If you're, if you're Chuck Norris and Jet Li calls you out, whether it's in a Friday's parking lot in Woodland Hills or it's on a national soundstage, you've got to fight. You're Chuck Norris. I know everybody else is like, well, you know, you've already proved yourself at this point, Chuck. You can just kind of nod and gracefully walk away. But at that point, you're just like a roadhouse pussy. Like you got, you're one of the nameless dudes in Roadhouse who fucking gets his ass kicked or just walks away. Fuck that. I, I understand Swayze's like, there comes a time to not be nice. Well, I'll tell you what, if Jet Li shows up in the Bruce Lee fucking tracksuit and calls you out, that's a time to not be nice. Well, even if you're Chuck Norris, that's an ass whooping you got to take. And if you get beat up in a Friday's parking lot by Jet Li, you can say, well, you know what, dude? I was expecting to just have garlic breadsticks with honey mustard dressing. I wasn't expecting to fucking throw down with one of the premier martial artists of our time. So if I get beat in a surprise fight while I'm wearing wingtips, then the fuck, that's how I get to lose. I'll take that ass whooping. But at least I met the challenge. But in real life now, everybody with a phone and everybody with a fucking Twitter account or Instagram, they're, they're every fucking jerky boys, fucking trailer park boys, whatever the fuck, all these guys, these, you know, impractical jokers, everybody, everybody's got an angle and a shtick and everybody takes their phone and they, they run up and they punch somebody at a restaurant and they run away. I mean, it's just, it's just a mess. The whole world is a jerky boys phone call and I don't, I can't live in it anymore. I don't want to live in it. Uh, and I know that sounds ominous, especially with the beginning of this fucking podcast where I was like, ah, I'm sad. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody cares about your sadness. Uh, you know, nobody cares that your head doesn't work anymore. Fucking grab it and fix it. Uh, have you noticed how this podcast has now gotten just to more Har- Howard Beale rants? It's just, it's just me shouting. I'm, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. I, it's just, I don't know if it's old age or fear creeping up upon me. I don't, I don't have any idea why I don't, I don't have a solid baseline to explain where my, where my head is. But, but, but regardless, it's all over the place. We're ping ponging and I'm vomiting it all over you now. And I apologize. 
Uh, everyone out there is willing to do dumb things. Everybody's drinking a gallon of milk and throwing up. Everybody's taking the cinnamon challenge. Everybody, Everybody's doing all this just to get famous. That fucking 30 seconds of fame. Someone will do something stupid. So these guys roll up on Da Baby. I think that's who it was. I'm just off the top of my head. He's at a jewelry store or whatever. And they're videoing it and they're calling him out. And they're just, and they're saying rude shit and saying mean shit, basically trying to provoke him into a fight. And I don't know if he's got the strap. I don't know if he's got a bodyguard. I don't know if he's with his friends. The baby's just out. He's trying to buy a ring. He's just trying to buy a gold rope. Can you leave the baby alone? You know what? Whether you're the baby and you're talking a bunch of shit on Instagram or Twitter, there are moments where you punch out, okay? And I mean like time clockwise. I'm not talking punch a dude out. I'm talking like, hey, yeah, I'm the baby and I'm a badass online or whatever the fuck. I'm a tough guy rapper. Who knows? Whatever. But if I'm at the mall having a fucking Wetzel's pretzel, don't, don't come, don't roll up on me with a cell phone and want to fight me, motherfucker. I'm off. I'm off the clock. I'm not the baby right now. Right now, I'm Joseph. That's who I am. I'm Joseph, the Wetzel's pretzels eating motherfucker who doesn't want to fight you on your iPhone. But this dude, I, and maybe they don't live their life like that. Maybe they just are always ready and they're frosty at all times to fucking go at it. I don't fucking know because I used to be vibrating all the fucking time waiting for bad shit to happen. But also, I was also a fucking fat sloth who ate himself into a coma and went to sleep half the fucking time. What do I know? But maybe the baby's frosty and he's ready to go. So these dudes approach him. They roll up on him at a fucking jewelry store, whatever. He's fucking shopping for earrings or whatever the fuck the baby buys. And then the next, next, it's like this video is edited so poorly too. I don't, it doesn't, it's weird. It's like all of a sudden they're in the store, they're yelling at him, they're talking shit. And then there's like a shove. It looks like the baby walks up. It's like, turn that phone off, whatever the fuck. And he shoves a guy. And the next thing you know, they're in the mall and the baby's on the, on the ground. Oh, no, the guy who rolled up on the baby is on the, on the ground, on the ground. There you go. And, uh, and this is, this will sound terrible. This sounds so humiliating, but it, it, to, it, to me, fuck that. It is. It's humiliating to me. This guy rolled up. He talked a bunch of shit. And then he's laying on the ground outside the mall. And you can see he's been hit. I mean, he's out of it. And his fucking pants are down. So he's, it's, it's, and maybe this speaks to something inside me. I don't know, but it, it's just, it's the, the emasculation of, of being humiliated in a public place. I, I, and, and inviting it. He invited it himself. You know what I mean? This dude called out the baby and whoever the baby's army was or whatever the fuck, whoever was with him. I don't know. But then they knocked this dude down and then his pants came off. And I don't know if they took his pants off, like as a way to humiliate him or, or he was wearing like kind of those low riding pants and they fucking slipped off when he got his ass kicked. I don't know, but he's just, if you're in the mall on all fours and crawling around in your underwear and they're filming you and making fun of it, that's just, that just strikes a note inside me. This, this like prison note, this emasculated toxic masculinity. Just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it, it almost makes me physically ill watching it happen. Like, and I'm a guy who loves violence. I love the UFC. Uh, but, but guys beating a guy up in the mall and taking his pants off. That's just, you're now, you're literally like two steps away from getting raped at that point. And it just, and maybe that's why that's what it feels like inside me. And I'm a guy who this, uh, this, all right, look, and I won't go into this. I don't want to trigger warning anybody. I'm a guy who, for some reason, uh, and I've talked about it on the fucking show before and whatever the fuck. Like I, I, I live in unbelievable fear of prison rape. I know it sounds ridiculous. I'm not going to prison. I don't want any bad. I just read a story that in California, not, not in Los Angeles, but in California, like murders in county jails have gone up like 300%. And the reason is because the jails are so overcrowded. They're putting murderers and felons in county with guys who like use the stolen credit card. So then these dudes get locked in for the night and they try to go to sleep and then they're in the fucking cell with a murderer who who might be mentally ill or, or might be just a fucking bad guy. And in the middle of the night, then the next morning they find the guy's body. And all I can do, and again, it might be, it's me. I know it's me. And it's something inside me. It's the, it's the, I'm, I'm able to put myself in situations and think about how terrible they must be. I told you, I do this with my old time radio. Uh, in old time radio, it'll be a guy who, uh, he'll kill his wife for the insurance money. And then they follow him around throughout the episode as he's getting progressively closed in on by the authorities or Mr. and Mrs. North or whoever the fuck. And he's starting to panic and his life's starting to get away from him. And I, I can genuinely, and I, I don't know what this means about me or, or my mental state or, or who I am as a person or what, you know, I've, I've done so much reading the past fucking five years on narcissism and 
bipolar borderline personality disorder and and empaths and all, I mean I've just I've just drowned myself in this information. And and so when I hear these stories, I can actually I can actually feel the way even, even though he did a terrible thing, the guy killed his wife, whatever the fuck. I know he's a terrible person, but in my brain I can I can actually put myself in that position of his terror rising every single night. Could you imagine could you imagine killing somebody? I mean, and then having to live with it? If you defended yourself, that's a totally different story. You would still have terrible trauma and you would still have to go and deal with it. But if you specifically killed somebody for the money or you, you wound up, uh, I guess, k- killing killing uh, your brother or uh, whomever the fuck and, and for the insurance money or just for gain, for personal gain or for whatever, uh, even if in a bar fight, if you knocked somebody out and they hit their head on the fucking bar and they died... How would you ever be able to wake up and look at yourself in the mirror? How would you ever be able to open your fucking eyes? And look, I know this has no point. I recognize that. I don't know if this is just an an, an analysis of the human condition. Um, you know, you, my 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 brain's taken a lot of punches over the past fucking five years, six years. It's just it's just my self esteem and me and everything. And and so whatever the fuck, it, it, that that doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um. But I'm able to put myself in the position of the person who is, I, I think I talked about this before on like those To Catch a Predator videos. Like I, it's awful. Fuck those guys. If, you, if you're going to fuck a kid, fuck you. Go to jail, cut his dick off, whatever the fuck you got to do. Make him a eunuch. I don't, I don't give a fuck. That's a danger. But when they do that thing where they make them sit down and do the fucking TV interview with them, I just picture just, just the, uh, the horrible fucking chaotic swirling inside of that person as they realize their life is over. I mean, they, they did a terrible thing, certainly, but for them to be fucking exposed and, and, and on such a large, grand national scale, I have to think they hate themselves anyway, because they're going to meet a fucking 13 year old for sex. I mean, fuck them and, and fuck their intentions and fuck them for even thinking like that. But like I said, in these videos, you can clearly see some of these guys are just fucking, they're obviously mentally ill. They show up in like flip flops and a stained t-shirt with a six pack of beer and think that's going to let them fuck a 13 year old girl. It's fucking awful. And they're, and they're like 55 and fat. It's like, dude, what the fuck? You're a monster. And yes, remove those guys from society or at least get them some fucking hospital help. Throw them in a fucking, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Dudes, I'm babbling. I know I'm babbling. I just, I just, uh, I find myself seeing clips of violence and I see my, I find myself seeing clips of thing and just, and just, hiding and and I and this is why when I say it's getting worse when I see the discourse getting worse or people getting like this week you know we had uh there were there were two different things that happened this week that that I I know I'm spinning off the fucking planet here I know I do I an open microphone in my mouth are a very bad combination sometimes and and like this week, the, you know, Kevin Durant in the, in the NBA Finals, Kevin Durant came back to play for the Golden State Warriors. Now, he had been out for 30 days or 31 days with, a, with what they said was a calf strain, but a lot of people speculated was probably an Achilles injury. And then he came back because everybody was giving him shit, calling him a pussy, saying he was soft because he wouldn't fucking play. And then he comes back to play, and within the first 12 minutes, he blows out his Achilles. Now he's not just hurt and trying to rehab. Now he's fucking gone for at least a year. He has to have surgery. This is a guy whose whole livelihood is his body, and he pushes his body to the fucking nth degree, and we don't know why. We don't know if he did it because he felt some sort of loyalty to his teammates. We don't know if he did it because he wanted to shut people up from calling him a pussy. We don't know why he did it other than he was a champion, and he got he got on the floor and tried to do what he could, and it wound up costing him dearly, unbelievably dearly. But I... Uh, then wind up reading every, uh, first of all, the media is bad enough because there was speculation coming out of legitimate writers from the Bay Area that maybe he was soft or maybe, you know, uh, with the insinuations like, you know, well, with Clay Thompson hurt, he he played all last year hurt. I I wonder if you'd worry about the same thing about with Kevin. Like they, everybody did everything they could to shame this guy. And then he comes back and it turns out he blows out his fucking leg and now he's gone for a year. And this was a guy who was about to make $200 million in the offseason. And now people are speculating. And now here's my favorite part, the pivot on it. Now they all feel bad for him. And now they're like, oh, the Warriors should just give him $200 million anyway. Well, you've, you've tricked this guy into fucking his leg up. And everybody's going to say, oh, no, they didn't trick him. Whatever. He, hey, he made the decision. Clearly, he made the fucking decision. 
But I look at it with a jaundiced eye and I look at our society today. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, Jack Youngblood played the Super Bowl on a broken leg. And you're, you're a hero. You're a fucking hero when you do something like that, as long as you get through it. But if you blow out your fucking leg, everybody looks at you as just, just like, oh, well, next man up. That's always the, 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 the mantra. Uh, well, you know, he tried. He went out there and he gave it a shot. But now, like I said, it's so speculative that everybody's like, well, should the Warriors give him all this money anyway? Another team should go ahead and pay him. Certainly. Well, it's like he's going to be 31 with a torn Achilles. I mean, this guy fucked himself up. He really cost himself in the long run. You can't just, and people aren't just going to be charitably giving money out to, to this guy in the off season, but I feel like he was almost bullied into playing. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but then reading again, all of these people who don't care about him afterwards. Ah, oh, well, that's the dangers. You know, he gets money to play a kid's game. That's what happens. Sometimes you get hurt I, in fuck you, you fucking gas station attendant, you fucking seven 11 counter person. You fucking investment banker, whatever the fuck you are, how, how dare you tell somebody how to live their life and act and perform and, and then, and then basically then when they fucking wind up getting thrown onto a trash heap, because again, these people will chew you up and spit you out. People chew you up and spit you out. I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't. David Ortiz is a baseball player and, uh, he was shot this week in the Dominican Republic and it was a, you know, someone said it was a robbery and he was shot in the leg. And then it turns out when you see the video, that looks like a hit. Like someone just came into the bar behind him and shot him for, no, for what looks to be no reason. But now I guess they're arresting people and they're arresting. They've got seven people arrested and it was a conspiracy and there was a whole group plan to shoot David Ortiz. And then a newspaper in, in England is saying it's because David Ortiz was, possibly having an affair with a drug dealer's wife. And, uh, and, and again, I shouldn't care about any of this, but I'd read about it. And then I dive in again. I shouldn't read the comments and it's my fault, but reading people who are saying, ha ha, he deserved it. Or, uh, Yankee fans are like, ah, I, I always knew this was a bad fucking guy. He can smile and pretend to be a good player, but he's still a fucking shit bag. And, and just, just the level of can't, can't you, can't you feel bad for a guy who got shot? Can't you feel bad for his family? He has children. Can't you feel bad for his wife who, let's say there's any truth at all to the story we heard. Well, now she's been humiliated on a fucking international scale. And you don't have to date, hate David Ortiz to feel bad for her. You can feel bad for her and for the kids. You can feel bad for the whole situation because it's a fucking tragedy. You don't have to sit there. Who sits there? Who types responses where they make fun of a guy who got shot because of the actions of the choices he may have made? I, I just don't. I don't. I find myself so disillusioned and I shouldn't be. There's no reason to be. There's no reason to be involved. And I keep telling myself, you know what? Just live your life and fucking pull yourself out of this fucking spiral and don't, don't, don't do that. But it's also because, you know what? I could very easily fix my life. Not very easily, but I could fix my life. I could grab what I'm doing and, and change the course. I could grab the, the, the steering wheel and pull my plane up out of this fucking spin. I I'm 51 years old and I'm still ruled by a mindset and emotions that I had when I was 13 or 10. I, I, I've gone to therapy for five years. Is it six now? I don't even fucking know. I was seeing a therapist once a week and now I see her th twice a month to find out what is going on. And I, but th here's the thing. I know what's going on. I just don't fix it. I had a long talk with my, with a friend of mine two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago. And, and I was talking about the same things I talk about. And I was talking about the things I can't get past. I'm stuck. I'm a needle on a record that just keeps staying in the same fucking place. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm trying to move my life past this one event. I'm trying to move my, move my life past this one set of circumstances and I can't. And I, and I, and I know why, because doing so would have to acknowledge starting over doing so would have to acknowledge, um, that, that I invested in a lie and, and I, I, I want, 
I want to believe that that it, it that it wasn't. I I know I and none of that matters. None of that matters. T, I, I, you care. Everybody cares. And and you're all out there. And I find you, and I and I find you sometimes late, as I'm finding you again for the second week in a row. And then you find me, you write me, you you do what you can for me, and I appreciate it. I have to do for myself. My friend looked at me two weeks ago, and he goes, "Be better." That's it. There's there's no choice. Like otherwise, you're just going to be fucking kicking up mud forever. Be better. That's it. When I see Shannon. In the in the in the memo part of every check I have to write her for every session, I always write something that that is is relevant to my life or my situation. Um, you know, I, I wrote once. I wrote, I thought the past wouldn't last. Um, you know, things like that, where you you just to move on. Just you you need to move on. You need to fucking move on. And the, and the day after my friend said that, I happened to see Shannon because we had rescheduled my, appo- my, my, my appointment from Monday to Saturday. And I just wrote, be better. That's it in the memo of the check. And now, you know, I'm 10 days past that now. And I, I don't, um, I'm not better yet. I'm not being better. You know, I, I always, I have, I, I wake up with all the intentions to be better. I, I plan to be better. I think that I'm going to be better. I know I'm going to be better. And then I show up old me, the, the one I can't, the hurdle, I can't jump. I mean, I will scold myself out loud in my house. I will talk to myself in my apartment. And if I went outside, I'd feel so much better. Like I said, I love the heat at night, but I still sit in my apartment and let it come into the windows rather than go out and embrace it. Go out. You know, I still go lift. I go to the gym three times a week. And, uh, you know, when I went and saw Rocketman, I went by myself. It felt great. I, 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 but too often I, I talk myself into not being active or a person or I lose myself in, in, in old me. And I'm not better. And I don't know why I can't be that. And already now I've bored you with this. When I wasn't going to, I didn't want to. Um, you know, shows shows are late because the show's about my life, and I I know you're. If you're not bored of me telling you the same thing over and over, you will be eventually. I'm supposed to be entertaining. I'm supposed to be a distraction. From like I I you know I did the show last week where I wound up just talking about the fucking rich and destroying and. And people wrote me and they said, you know, people were very nice. And some of them said, you should do just a political show or you should just, you should go on, on, uh, I had a couple people recommend I should go on my buddy Graham's show and do all these things. And I just, I went, I'm, I'm supposed to be the distraction from this garbage. You know, the, 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 the world is, is, you know, the things that I don't, I don't want to talk about this shit. I want to laugh. I want to go out and go swimming and go to the fucking theater and, and enjoy good things and meet good friends. I don't, I don't want to talk about fucking politics. Like I said last week when someone's they're like, we're looking for Donald Trump impersonator for a comedy sketch. Nope. No, there's nothing funny about this and not in the boo hoo. Everything's sad way. It's just that everything's fucking hack and destroyed. You're never going to fucking joke the joke. It's not going to happen. And you know, today I, I, as I record this, I saw that Sarah Sanders is leaving the white house. And they're fetting her as, oh, this brilliant woman is now going into private, whatever the fuck. And, and I guarantee you, she's going to be on all the TV shows and they're going to give her jobs. And she's going to probably get on the Emmys to come out and give an award and make a joke about lying. And and everyone's going to go, yay. And, and, and no one's watching it all fall apart and caring, but some people are, but then there's nothing you can do about it. There's literally nothing you can do about it. Yesterday. I, again, I don't want to get into this, but yesterday Trump says he would, he would still accept information from uh, uh, Russia or a uh, United States, you know, some compromised enemy or whatever the fuck. And then today they went, yeah, no, he didn't really say that. No, he did. We saw it. We have it on video. Yeah, no, nah, he didn't. No, no, but, but we did. We have a video. And you want reporters to just go, we did. We have a video. We have a video. He said it yesterday. We said it. He fucking said it. He fucking said it. But we're all being gaslit as a nation. And, and like, 
and dudes, I've I've had that happen to me in my real life, and it's it's not fucking great. And maybe that's why I'm so attuned to it. Maybe that's why it offends me on such a fucking level. I don't know. So, so people reached out and they're very nice and I'm sure they'll reach out again this week and you're all very nice. And, and I love you for listening. And I, I, and people are always like, Hey, cause people, I will do this whenever I have these fucking shows where I fucking fall apart. People are like, Hey man, it's important for us to hear those because there's a lot of us going through that same thing. And, uh, and that's great. But do you really want to hear it over and over? Isn't there some sort of fucking trigger warning where I got to tell you, Hey, again, I'm falling apart and, and, uh, but I'm not even falling apart. Please don't think there are so many people who have it so much worse than me. I, I recognize that. And no, I'm not even, I don't even have it worse. I'm fine. I, I have this show. I go out, I see people, I have friends. I mean, I'm, I'm not bad. I just, there's one issue in my life that beats the shit out of me and I can't, and that's the one thing I can't hurdle. It's for some reason, that's the one thing that is, is perennially, I, well, it's not, it's not even for some reason. Here's the thing. I've identified everything. I know why. I know why. And yet I can't fucking leap it. I can't. It's, it's a fucking, it's my Snake River Canyon. I'm fucking evil Knievel. And I'm just like, yeah, man, let's jump this shit. And I'm just going to go fucking plummeting straight fucking down every, I'm, I'm, I'm Charlie Brown and this, this issue holds the football and I continuously tell myself, well, it's fine. We'll kick this motherfucker now. And it gets yanked the fuck out. But the problem is I'm also Lucy holding the football. Imagine, imagine if Charlie Brown had to hold his own football and kick it and kept fucking falling on his ass. That's me. Nobody's holding the football. Nobody's tricking me into doing this. I'm the one who I, I've, I've in fact, there's not even a football. I tell myself, yeah, no, do this. It'll be fine. And then you do, you go, oh, okay. And then you just, you step on your dick and you fucking fall down. Jesus Christ. You don't care. You shouldn't care, but you do care. I know. I love you. Thank you. But you care. Everybody cares. And eventually I will, I will bring you entertainment again at some point in my life. Eventually next week, <laughs> you know what? These shows that don't count. Those are the shows that, that you, you they're not entertaining. If you ever see, if there's no numerical value on the title of an episode, please know you're going to be swimming in this kind of fucking soup again. God damn it. I, I don't know. Justin Bieber challenged Tom Cruise to a fight this week. And like I said, I, I, I laugh because it's cause it, you know why I laugh more because it probably could really happen. Like if Tom Cruise said, yeah, I'll fuck you up. The two of them would fight and it would make millions of dollars. I'd watch it. I'd fucking watch it. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I've watched worse fights. I watched CM Punk fight in the UFC. I watched a fucking Boston cop fight Kimbo Slice. I mean, who the fuck cares? I've watched YouTube videos of Kimbo Slice. I saw baby kick a guy's ass in a mall and take his pants off. And then I saw it again. There was another... Another fucking Twitter row between guys. And I don't know if they were rappers or whatever, just fucking tough talkers, who knows? But it was the same thing where like a dude wound up in a fight and then he's getting his ass beat and his pants fall down. And then they, they filmed him and they, and he had, he had patterned boxers on and they were like, uh, oh man, he shit his pants. He doodled his pants and they, and they filmed it and they put it online. So then this guy, I don't know if again, he has street cred or whatever though. I don't know. But he had to put out a statement that said he didn't shit his pants, that that was the pattern of the boxers. And I'm like, your, your life has fallen completely apart if you have to put out a statement on Twitter that you didn't shit your pants. I, I, I mean, don't even get in a situation where you think this, you know what, literally any situation you get into, folks, anything. If you're in a grocery store, somebody cuts in front of you in line and you go, hey, man, I was in line. And they're like, hey, man, fuck you. Think for a second. Just think, well, all right. I mean, this is, this is, I'm, a, I'm, I've been aggrieved by this person. And certainly they, I could do something here. I could escalate this. I could keep talking because I do this on the road now all the time in LA. People will cut me off. And I, I, I had a guy the other day in traffic and he fucking rolled his window down and he's trying to yell at me at a streetlight. And I'm like, I'm not rolling my fucking window down to talk to this guy. Cause what's going to happen either. Cause here's the thing. This guy's going to say a bunch of terrible shit to me. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm either going to smirk in his face or I'm going to go, what the fuck is your problem, dude? And then he's going to keep yelling and then he's going to drive away. He's going to drive away. 
There's not, there's not going to be any satisfaction out of that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get to tackle this guy and pin him to the ground and press my forearm into his fucking windpipe until his eyes start to bulge and he starts to wonder about what mistake he made by challenging me to get out of my fucking car and ending his fucking life on a goddamn sidewalk in the middle of the day. I'm never going to get that satisfaction. I'm never going to get to see the look in his eyes when he realizes, oh man, this was a fucking mistake because he gets to drive off because people, that's what they do now. They might've done it forever. It just might just be in my face more often. I don't know. I don't know. But if you are ever in a situation where somebody cuts you off in traffic and you think you're going to fucking swear at them and flip them off, why? Why? If you're at the grocery store and somebody says some shit to you or somebody fucking disrespects you in some way, it's just, it's not worth it, man. It's fucking not worth it. Believe me, I used to be fucking ready to go. I, I, you heard stories. I've been at fucking post offices. I punched holes in comedy club walls. I mean, and fucking, and there's still, that guy still lives inside me. He's ready to come out at any time. I have to work really fucking hard to make sure he doesn't. But man, I, I, I don't, if you're ever in a position where you're like, hey, you know what? Best case scenario, I beat up another human being. And then I have to deal with that later. In, in my darker moments, I have to remember knocking teeth out of somebody's fucking head. Now, granted, they certainly did slander me or did whatever they needed to do to me. And, and, and I got my, my, got my revenge. I got my comeuppance, but still, did you, if you've ever had to physically unleash yourself on somebody, it's not, I, I think about it now and I'm like, and it exists inside me. It does. It, it absolutely does. But also I never used to think of consequences before. Now I think before any time I'm ever going to fight somebody before any time I'm ever going to fucking launch myself and believe me, you'll call me on this in six weeks when I talk about almost fighting a dude at a store. I know you will. I know you will. And and good for you, but I'm going to always from around from now on, I'm going to think about the fact that a guy had to put a fucking statement out on Twitter that said he didn't shit his pants in the fight with unidentified Twitter guy. I mean, and also the, the, the faux import of your life that anybody would even care if you shit your pants, that, that you really, you have to put a statement out to what your followers, your subscribers, your, the people who are like, ah, ha, ha, we, we loved you, but then you shit your pants and now we hate you because you're dumb. I mean, it's just, it's just, this is a goddamn word salad without dressing. I totally get it. I don't, I, cause I don't know what to bring you this week. And that's why this episode doesn't count. This is episode fucking spores. (laughs) Oh, man. I would pay to see Justin Bieber Bieber fight Tom Cruise. So then the meme went around and everybody's just like, you know, uh, Tom Cruise is 31 years older than Justin Bieber. So then everybody's like, what what celebrity 31 older, 31 years older than you would you fucking fight? There's that scene in in Fight Club when they're like, "Who would you fight?" And and fucking Ed Norton's like, "I'd fight Shatner." And Tyler Durden wants to fight fucking Abraham Lincoln or Brad Pitt. We, they're both Tyler Durden. Spoiler alert. But he says he wants to fight Abe Lincoln. And uh, Abe Lincoln's such a great choice, by the way. That's it's an, that's an underrated choice in that movie, man. That's a fucking great choice. Um. But I, so then I was like, all right, yeah, they're like, what celebrity would you fight that was 31 years older than you? And, and I'm like, all right, well, fuck this. I, I, I actually thought about it. I'm like, all right, well, let's, so that's the thought exercise I will bring to you. Who would I fight? What, ep, what, what, uh, even though I told you now that I'm shying away from this sort of thing, but if I had to, if I was called out Bieber style by one of these fucking celebrities, who could I handle in a fight? I have a top 10 list. That's right. I've actually written a top 10 list of who I could fucking fight. What celebrities that were 31 years older than me? Along the lines of Jet Li calling out Chuck Norris at a Friday's. If I was going to call somebody out, who would I call out? You know who's number one on this list? Joe Don Baker. That's Buford Pusser from Walking Tall. And here's what I say to you. He would fuck me up in a fight even to this day. He's in fucking Cape Fear. He's like a tough guy detective. I can't fucking fight Joe Don Baker. He's 31 years older than me. I think he'd fucking ruin me. I can't handle that fight. Joe Don Baker beats me, pants me. I shit my pants getting beat up by fucking Buford Pusser. Now look, that's one ass whooping I got to take, but I can't handle Joe Don Baker in a fight. Number two, Dean Stockwell. Now I probably got a big size advantage on Dean Stockwell, but he's wiry and he's fast. And also you saw him in blue velvet. He's just as fucking nuts as Hopper. 
And he's got all that. That's the thing. You can't underestimate anybody who's nuts. Anybody who's got some fucking weird past. Like Stockwell used to hang out with Nicholson and those fucking guys. He's probably got some weird Roman Polanski tricks. And that's all I need is to get my ass beat by Dean Stockwell and he fucking buggers me in a goddamn hot tub against my wishes. Fuck that, man. Not a fan. Trigger warning for that as well. So that's Don, that's Don Baker and Stockwell. They fucked me up. You know who else I looked up? Louis Gossett Jr., I don't even think I need to elaborate. Do you think I have a chance in a fight with Louis Gossett Jr.? That guy would mayonnaise me into fucking next week. I get fucking ruined by the Iron Eagle. I got no chance with Louis Gossett Jr. Number three, Louis Gossett Jr. Number four, Bruce Dern. Bruce Dern looked frail in Hateful Eight. He looked frail in that other fucking movie he made. But I was behind Bruce Dern in a casino and he's got height on me. I think he's actually taller than me. He might be 6'3". I'm 6'2". And I know he's all bent and gnarled and fucking ready to go at any time, but I got to think he'd go out in a blaze of glory in a fight with me and he'd fucking ruin me. He'd knock every tooth out of my head with that fucking weird look on his face. Again, you can't underestimate crazy. And I think Bruce Stern has a fucking real thick mine of crazy running through him and I would get ruined by Bruce Stern. So this is Don Baker, Stockwell, Gossett Jr. and Dern. They fucking ruined me. Hector Elizondo. Now I know normally I would be the favorite in a fight with Hector Elizondo. But he's another guy who I think has probably got some sort of deep, dark past. In the roles you see, he brings that malevolence to the screen. Whether he's in Pretty Woman or, or uh, wasn't he in fucking, uh, maybe I'm mixing him up with Edward James Olmos. Edward James Olmos, you know what? Edward James Olmos played that math teacher, Jaime, whatever the fuck. And he looked like he was playing Hector Elizondo. So here's my speculation. I think Hector Elizondo, as I'm in a fight with him, whether I'm, if I start to take over, I think Edward James almost as Jaime Escalante shows up looking like Elizondo tags himself in and he takes me on and I'm winded and I can't handle it. I get beaten up by the fucking tag team of Elizondo and James almost. So that's fucking four guys, five guys. I can't beat number six, Chris Christopherson. Now, some of you might think to yourselves that I could handle Chris Christopherson in a battle, just like you thought I could handle Hector Elizondo, but I've got a theory the theory is that I love Chris Christopherson so much that I couldn't land a punch. He was the rubber duck in Convoy. He's in Star is Born with fucking Streisand. He's a legend. He's one of the highwaymen. Do you think I can handle the highwaymen? All right, let's go with that. You know what? Fuck, if I challenge Chris Christopherson to a fight, and again, I would have to challenge him because he's way too fucking cool to call me out. But if I called him out in a fight, he would fucking whistle, and the rest of the highwaymen would assemble on him like a goddamn Country Roads Voltron and fuck me up, dude. And I would, I would just be fucking ruined. There'd be fucking Haggard and Jennings and Nelson and Christofferson in just this unholy, half dead, half alive, four man Voltron of country fucking woe. And they would beat my ass and leave me lying in a pool of tobacco spit. Fuck that. I can't handle Christofferson's title or the rest of the goddamn highwaymen. This meme has not been kind to me because the next person on our list is Robert Redford. Robert Redford is so cool you couldn't land a punch on him. And even if I did land a punch on him, have you seen Robert Redford these days? That guy's face is creased more than the Grand Canyon. I would lose my fist in the folds of his head and then he would beat me. Uh, he beat my ass as I was trapped in his face. And he's too good looking to punch. And he invented Sundance. So just for my own well-being in my career, like, 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 like the other guys in my fucking in my career, like they wouldn't hurt my career. Fuck that. Robert Redford really put the fucking kibosh on me. And also, I'll tell you this, the ghost of Paul Newman shows up to help Redford beat my ass. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Clearly, you're going to get Redford and Newman fucking both tag teaming me and slapping me into the fucking ground. Number eight on the list is Alan Alda. And, uh, Again, Alan Alda's not going to call me out for a fight. I would have to call him out. And that's why I'm here to tell you that that fight never takes place. Because Alan Alda is, uh, he's just, he's just another guy like Dolly Parton. He's, he's another celebrity like Dolly Parton where he's just, he's just good. He's inherently good. And I got too much enjoyment from MASH growing up and seeing him in interviews. He's just a gentle soul and I, I can't fight him. And I know that's against the theme of the meme. And we're not here to go against the theme of the meme, but I can't call it Alan Alda. So that fight never takes place. So I call that a loss on my record. And right now I'm 0 and 8. That leaves number nine. Ursula Andress. 
Oh, I know you're thinking to yourself, Mike, you couldn't possibly take out a nurse Landris. Well, look, I'm 0-8. I got to try to find a victory somewhere. And I think that if I drew a line in the sand and I called out Ursula Landris for a fight, um, you know what? She's one of those ballsy old Hollywood broads that would probably fuck me up too, like Elaine Stritch. She would just fucking destroy me. And also, there's no way I could possibly handle Ursula Landris in a fight because she was a Bond girl. She's learned some of those tricks from fucking Sean Connery and Dr. No and Gold, whatever the fuck. I know she would fucking destroy me. And actually, again, that's one ass open I'd have to take. I'd get in close to fight in a phone booth. I would just, I would let Ursula Landers beat my ass. You know, I'd pay her to fucking slap me like I paid that stripper in Peoria. But she'd have a little more cachet, I would think. Hey, who have you paid to slap you? A stripper in Peoria and Ursula Andres. Everybody would be like, Ursula Andres? Nobody would even think about that stripper in Peoria. So again, I think Ursula Andres rolls me. Uh, partially because my heart wouldn't be in it and partially because I would actually want her just to tell the goddamn story. Hey, Ursula Andrews slapped me in the face and beat my ass. She brought all the Bond girl tricks to fucking, to, to hoe on me and I fucking let it happen. So now I'm 0-9 and this meme has destroyed me. But in my research, after being 0-9, look, man, I need a layup. I need somebody that I can handle. And look, I think we can all discuss among ourselves. There's no way I'm going to fight Joe Don Baker because I'm never going to get close to him. I can't find Hector Elizondo to get into a battle. Dean Stockwell, hold on, something just happened. Uh, Dean Stockwell hasn't uh, hasn't any chance of meeting me and being in a fight. Louis Gossett Jr. is not going to sully his reputation by seeing me. Bruce Dern, like I said, I was close enough to fuck that guy up in a casino in Tahoe and he moved a line on me and he cost us money. But uh, but I don't think I could get close. Now, Chris Christopherson, he's worlds away from me. Redford, you, I'm not even in the same stratosphere. Alda, I think he did a friend's podcast once, but I, I don't think I could get close. Ursula Andrus, yeah, that's I'm not even in the same fucking time zone, stratosphere, area code universe as Ursula Andrus, so that's never happening. So I'm 0-9 in these fictitious fights. But this 10th fight could actually happen. This 10th fight... I, tr- seriously, if I wanted to, I could make this 10th fight happen today. And after going 0-9 in these previous fights, I uh, I got to be honest. I might be looking for a victory. And just knowing that the one fight that I'm guaranteed of winning is the one fight that I could make happen lets that possibility hang in the air in such a way that I can't ignore it. And I have to bring it to you. The celebrity that's 31 years older than me that I really think I could fucking destroy in a fight. The celebrity that's 31 years older than me that is within my fucking universe, that is within my inner circle, if you will, that I think I could actually make happen. Now, whether they knew it was going to happen is one thing or the other. I could actually, I'm sure if I called this person out for a fight, I don't know if they make it happen. Perhaps, I mean, I, I they may be so rageful or angry. Or maybe they may have so many other issues they want to deal with and get them out on me. Who knows? But I can tell you, I've met this person and they're one of the, the most kind, the most gentle, uh, a person who was nice to me in a time of need, a person who reached out to me, uh, and, and my wife at the time and showed me hospitality and showed me grace when they certainly didn't have to. And someone who I've interacted with several times and has been, uh, absolutely nothing but generous and hospitable to me and always friendly, always kind. And yet, and yet I'm Owen nine. I need a victory folks, but am I a bad enough guy? to overlook this person's kindness, this, this person's gentility? Am I, am I a bad enough guy? Am I so desperate for a win to make this meme work for me that I can call out this person and overlook the fact that they have done everything they can to make me feel comfortable in their presence every time I've met them? You're goddamn right I am. So Walter Koenig... You've been unbelievably kind to me every time we've interacted in the past. But keep your head on a swivel. Because I'm 0-9. And, and that O must go. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can be a, be a Twitter follower of mine. That's right. That exists. You can follow me at twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. 
Uh, what are there? What are the other places? I'm at Instagram. I'm there. I'm at Snapchat. I'm there at Mike40YOB. I'm on the PS4 network at Mike40YOB. If you want to be my pal on there or send me a note or a message, look at all these fucking places you can get me. And yet I burrow into my apartment like a tick. I'm, I'm buried in my tick. Like if I, if I was just fucking digging into some country boy's thigh underneath his over overalls as he walked through a field of tall grass and I'm about to give you all fucking Lyme disease, baby. Uh, Ryan Dirks does all of the cool ass fucking web stuff for our show. And I got to contact him. I got to contact everybody. I got so much shit I got to do. And this is another thing. I, I, I hide under the coats. My fucking coats are mountainous. You ever see that mountain of colon blow fucking cereal in that commercial? Jesus Christ, that's my pile of coats that I hide under. I got so much shit I got to do. So much, uh, so much, so many agendas, so many things, so much life to live. And yet, and yet, <laughs> and yet. Uh, Ryan Dirks does the web stuff. Find him at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks and tell him he's cool. And of course, David Hernandez does all the neat stuff for this uh, show regarding music and, uh, and artwork. And I will tell you this. You know, he hasn't done any artwork uh, for a long time, for reasons. Uh, but he's now, uh, he's, going, he's going to be doing more little Schmitty artwork going forward starting this week, I believe. I hope. We'll see. Uh, but it will not be, obviously, if you look at your little window right now on your iTunes, there's me. Hi. Uh, that's a picture of me. Somebody said it was a good picture of me, so I decided to use it. So why not? Um, but the artwork that David does will be generated after he hears the show. And then it'll go up on the YouTube clip, which will go up on the weekend. So uh, if you want to see new little Schmitty artwork, it'll be exclusively on YouTube uh, lurking. Every time you go ahead and play this on YouTube, you'll hit, you'll see it or you'll see whatever it is. And that's fine. And that's cool. And that's uh, going to be great. So uh, as I said, that's at his discretion. I assume he's going to do it this weekend. Uh, but also this episode, he might listen to it and go, dude, I can't. What am I going to draw you falling apart? <laughs> and he might. Who knows? Um uh, but David is a, you know, if you want him to do work for you, first of all, let me tell you this. You want to be his friend at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. And, uh, and if you ever want him to do any artwork for you, you got to, got to be his friend there because you can go through and peruse all of his, uh, folders. He's got, uh, the amazing artwork he's done for this show. He's done all sorts of artwork in the past. And that's all stuff that you can go ahead and find there at his facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez photos section. And, uh, also he has a closed group on Facebook. You can join. It's called that's dumb. This is dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. I think, I think it's, that might be too many dumbs, but you can go ahead and become a member of that. What you need to do is, uh, you, you know, ask him to join. And then he asks you three questions and you have to answer those questions. You become part of the group. And then you can see all sorts of amazing artwork he's created for that group. He's, he's it came up, he's come up with different characters, new characters, um, you just get an idea for what, what kind of a talented guy he is. I mean, you get an idea every week here, at least because you hear the music. Certainly you used to see the artwork, but now you hear the music. Um, but he's, uh, he's available to do artwork for you. That's right. He can create caricatures. He can do Facebook art for you, which you can display as your profile picture. Uh, he might even be doing Facebook timelines. I don't know. But again, like I said, the key to doing that is to be at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and become his friend. And then you can peruse through all of his artwork there, all the stuff that he's done. Also, if you want to join the Westside 86 Jokers, which is the fan club for this show, you can see all the timeline work he's done there as well. It's been, I mean, he's just done unbelievable work for me, for you, for him. And uh, the history of it is all virtually there at Facebook. Like I said, facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Also, he has a website, artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. You can check it out there and see all of the, uh, that's more of his corporate stuff. You can take a look there, but if you want to see his Valscapes, his Guy Cons, all of the individual work he's done for people, as well as the stuff he's done just on Facebook, the memes he's created, everything that he's done, the guy's a fucking cottage industry. You can find him and be his friend and, uh, and check out all of the artwork that you need and, and possibly hire him to do for you going forward at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. That's facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. First, there was Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Then the sequel, The Captain and the Kid. Now Bernie Taupin and Sir Elton John proudly present the long-awaited completion of the trilogy, Spaghetti and the Lupus Ghost. Hey, kid, hope that you were ready, but I'll tell you something about this crazy cat spaghetti. His partner got a wicked rash up on his face. Ooh, he's a phantom with a mouth ulcer hovering in space.
That is the song I should have played last week when I talked about Rocket Man. Uh, it was funny because David has done a version of uh, "Sorry" seems to be the hardest word, but it was on a <laughs> it was a recording he's done twenty years ago. Maybe I have it on cassette, and then I wound up making it. You know, whatever we ripped it and we put it in my iTunes. And I wrote him last week and I said, "Hey, look, can I use this version?" Um, because I did a lot of talking about Elton John and Rocket Man. And uh, he didn't get back to me, so I built the episode because, I, you know, we were running late last week, just like we're running late again this fucking week. And then finally, I put up the episode, and then he called me, he, he texted me back, and he's like, hey, dude, um, you know, I, I'd prefer you didn't. Uh, if you want to, go, please explain that it was recorded in an apartment, you know what I mean, with no studio or anything. And, and I would have, but I mean, I understand, I believe me, I respect, uh, uh, if he doesn't want me to use it, I'm not going to use it. But then he's like, what about spaghetti and the lupus ghost? And I'm like, ah, fuck, I totally forgot about that. So that's what you just heard now. Uh, and again, I will use it to serve as a reminder that you should see fucking rocket man because it is goddamn fantastic. And it, uh, it made me feel all sorts of different ways. And it really, I related to it in all sorts of different, uh, uh, on levels and it's just, you know, the music was important, but also the story is important. And, and it's a movie, like I said, telling the story uh, as old as time, but you, you eventually, eventually you have to forgive yourself. Uh, and eventually you have to love yourself and you have to find a way to do that. And, uh, and, um, you know, I'm still really trying hard to do that. I don't, I, I mean, I look, <laughs> I love myself, but I don't value myself and, and I don't want to tear that up and go through all this shit. Cause you already listened to it, but you, you've already strained yourself to listen to the beginning of this fucking show. But I, um, but that's true. Hey, there you go. Hey, I'm on Cameo. Let's do some plugs. Uh, you can hire me. God, why wouldn't you after this fucking week? Uh, why wouldn't you hire me to go ahead and be fucking an idiot on your phone? Uh, Cameo is an app that you download to your phone, and then you can hire me to go ahead and tell you happy birthday or get fucked or whatever the fuck you want me to do. Uh, and, and and let me tell you, I, I recognize clearly that if you, if you don't want to use it with me, that's totally fine because there are so many famous people now on Cameo. I, I'm shocked. And also, all the comedians are now finding it, like Nick DiPaolo and all these other dudes, like, I see them running their ads constantly. I think Andy Daly's on there now. Why wouldn't you fucking hire Andy Daly to do your cameo? Don't hire me. Hire Andy Daly. I believe he's on there. He might not be, but he might be. Um, there was uh, I, there was somebody that really surprised me where I was like, really? Holy shit, that person's on there? Um, in addition to regular famous people, but but someone like in my, my universe, a, a comedian, where I was like, dude, really? I mean, I'd fucking book that guy over me. for fu- I'd, I literally, in the morning, I'm going to talk to that person rather than talk to me. Um, but I exist on there. If you want to go ahead and reach out to me, uh, and cameo, like I'll tell you what, we had the Schmitty call me at gmail.com, which still exists. And I've made a few calls and I have more calls to make. Uh, and then there was a a woman, our friend, Mary Beth Kirk, who was, it was her birthday this week. Let's wish it. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to be an MC at a comedy club right now. Happy birthday, Mary Beth Kirk. Uh, it was her birthday and I went, I tried to combine her birthday into a birthday slash Schmitty call me extravaganza because she wrote me a note and said, Hey, Schmitty call me. Did not include a phone number. So I waited and, you know, because I saw her birthday was coming up. I was like, oh, I said, oh, I'll call her tomorrow. That'd be fucking awesome. And then uh, sure enough, it went by the wayside because there was no phone number. So I wrote her a note on Facebook. I go, look, I I would have called you today, but there was no number. And then she sent me her number and was very nice. So she now looms in the future. Eventually she'll get a call or a text. Who knows? And I won't text you guys. I'll call you. But if you want me to text you too, let me know. Whatever the fuck. Who knows? Um, but make sure you include a phone, phone number as I, again... Letterman with a pen on the old microphone. Uh, if you're going to do that, there's more of a pen. Uh, um, if you want me to call you, you got to include a phone number. Otherwise, I, I can only do so much detective work. And uh, uh, I might be a dick, but I'm not a private dick. So there you go. Please give me your phone number. And also with Cameo, you'll have to do that anyway. Or, no, I, I actually, no, you don't give me your phone number. I do a video and you get it right to your phone, uh, which is perfect. So please hire me for Cameo. Or don't, because there are better people on there. Whatever you want to do with your life. I can't tell you how to be. I can't tell you how to behave, man. Uh, but that exists. Uber and Lyft also exist. Um, even though in California right now, like, you know what's funny? I will tell you this. This is this is driving me crazy. I told you that Uber slashed the, the compensation for drivers. As you know, we all know this. Lyft too. But now all of these articles are coming out about how how Uber and Lyft drivers are gaming the surge and benefiting. And what they don't realize is drivers are looking for a workaround of having all of the money from normal hours slashed. So, yeah, drivers don't want to drive unless there's a fucking surge so they can try to make as much money as they possibly can, because 
we're independent contractors. So you would imagine that we've, if we could find a better way to make money, we would. But if there's a better way to Uber or Lyft where we can benefit more, drive less, and make more money, why the fuck wouldn't people do that? I got news for you. That's fucking America. Is it ruining this country? Perhaps it is. But people have been gaming the system for as long as there's been a fucking system. But all of these articles paint it like, oh, you, the poor consumer, have to pay high prices because the drivers are manipulating the surges. It's like, dude, if they just paid a normal fucking wage and there wasn't surge pricing, just give me a, a, you know, pay me. If you told me, hey, we'll pay you 25 bucks an hour or whatever the fuck or 20 bucks an hour to drive people around and I could make the decision one way or the other, then that's fine. I'd go drive 10 hours. I'd make fucking 200 bucks and I'd be done for the day. So, and, and you know, whatever, or if you said, Hey, I'll pay you, we'll pay you 25 bucks an hour, but you, and, or, or we'll pay 15 bucks an hour. We'll pay all your gas, whatever the fuck, but quit making it like, Oh, drivers are in a game trying to fight against Uber. And then the consumer loses. It's like, dude, quit taking the side of the fucking billion dollar company. If they have, if they changed their whole work thing and they paid us like normal people. And I don't mean to fucking whine about this. I'm not Norma fucking Ray. I'm not ringing the bell. I'm not carrying a picket sign. As I've told you, I could get a different job or a better job. Yes, that all exists, but I'm just, I'm getting tired of the slanted media angle of how the evil drivers are manipulating the surge to exploit customers. It's like, no, people are trying to stay alive, man. People in this, in this world are trying to stay alive. And yeah, there's fucking scam artists everywhere. But I think most people are good and they're just trying to do the best they can for themselves. I don't know. What do I know? The fuck do I know? But if you want to be one of those people who games the surge at the expense of the, the woeful customer, go ahead and use my code to do it. With Lyft, the code is Mike720057. That's uh, capitals, all capitals. M I K E seven, two, zero, zero, five, seven, Mike seven, two, double O five, seven. Uh, use that. If you're going to drive for Lyft, use that as a first time rider for Lyft. And I'll get a spiff for that. That's cool of you to think of me. Thank you. And for Uber, there's also a code all lowercase D J Z W one Y T T U E. That's D J Z W the number one, the lumber, the number one Y T T U E D J Z W one Y T T U E all lowercase Lyft is Mike seven, two, double O five, seven, all upper case and uh and go drive and as a matter of fact the first day you drive for uber hire me as a cameo so i can tell your passengers what to expect when they're in the car with you look at this look at the synergy i've just created to make double money for myself hi i'm gaming the system we have a youtube channel did you know that i think i just mentioned that when i talked about little schmitty a second ago uh right now all of the podcast episodes we are current up to the moment except for this one you're hearing right now is not up there because i have to wait for the artwork but we are current in the moment for all the uh, episodes that you can find over there at, uh, at YouTube for this podcast. Will I do episodes of things going further where I talk and I just do chats or I do a 10 minute review of a movie? Yes, I will. Jesus fucking Christ. But there's this man who lives in my head and tells me nobody wants to see me do things. And as soon as I can fucking stab him in the heart and soon as, as soon as I can get a, a double, uh, leg takedown of him and then I can just fucking lay on top of him and choke him the fuck out. I can't, uh, I, I, that they won't exist, but they will soon. Please keep checking the YouTube. Oh, here's the best thing to do. Why don't you subscribe to the YouTube channel? Cause then a new video goes up and you'll get told, Hey, look, Schmitty put up a new video as I yawn in your face. And I don't mean to, but that exists, man. Why not check it out? The YouTube channel with all of the episodes of this and then uh, previous stand up and, uh, and, uh, Twitch things. I did a, tw- a Twitch rant the other day that I might make a clip. It was like a 15 minute rant. It was a fun story about going to lunch with a friend of mine. Uh, I do a lot of that. Did you mind? Oh, I didn't even mention Twitch. I'm on Twitch. Hi, twitch.com or no twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I go and I stream games or I stream me talking. I stream whatever the fuck. And you can go watch me play Vikings and robots or watch me play night in the woods, which is this story about a depressed cat that I relate to probably more than I should. Uh, all of this stuff exists over there on Twitch. And, uh, you want to hear me? If you like me moaning here, Oh, go watch me moan on Twitch. I don't, I promise. (laughs) Yawning is just attacking me now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing the best I can at Twitch streaming games and I need to make that even better. I need to fucking make my channel the best it possibly can. Uh, I half ass a lot of stuff. I don't like it. I take the easy way out. Again, talk about game in the system. You know, it's, it, with Twitch, I can press one button. I'm on stream, and when I, I don't build my stream elements, I, I supposed to run tests for artwork and stuff, and I tried to run a test, and I couldn't figure out how to run a test. So you know what I did? I fucking hit under the coat, so I walked away. And all I'm doing is hurting myself. 
All I do with everything is hurt myself. I have to figure out a way to stop hurting myself. Is there a way I can stop hurting myself? Let's do that. Wouldn't that be great? And I don't mean harming myself in a physical way. I'm not that guy. That that It never reaches that pitch. Um, but I do, I do stand in my own fucking way a whole lot. And I need to fucking stop. And that's been a the theme of the show for 15 fucking years. That's right. I'm predicting the next three years. Or <laughs> four years. <laughs> Uh, so the YouTube channel exists. Go ahead and check it out, please. Uh, the Twitch channel exists. Please subscribe to both of those. And uh, if you can tune into a stream, that's great. I'm there having fun. Usually I talk and then I play games and then I talk some more and it's oh so fun. We've got a nice little community over there. We have a discord as well. A 40 year old boy discord. Uh, join that. Get in the chat on there. Why am I yawning so much? Fuck. This is strange at the end of the show. It's not even late. It's the middle of the fucking day. I don't know. My brain, my body's attacking me. It's telling me that my body is telling me I should shut up at this point. Um, so there you go. Hey, also, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm on rock solid. My buddy, uh, my buddy, Pat is putting out videos. He put out a video of us doing build a band. And if you join his Patreon, uh, I have a Patreon too. I mean, you know what rock solid exists. And with Pat's Patreon, you can join and you can see videos of me doing a, a breakdown of Eddie money's reality show with Pat. That's great. But I'll go ahead and pitch my Patreon this week. My Patreon exists. Um, it's strange for me after doing a show of this quality to tell you that you should support it, but it, it exists out there if you want to. It, it supports me in my endeavors of Twitch and everything else, and, and, I'm, you know, and, and I'm trying to be better. That's it. So Patreon exists if you want to be a person who goes ahead and joins that. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. We've got the... Uh, the merchandise page, which is the Joe business page. And there's the Amazon link on there. If you use the Amazon link that also supports the show, you're going to be shopping at Amazon anyway, right? Well, we get money, they get money, you get stuff, everything you buy, everything you go ahead and click, everything you go ahead and click through. If you go ahead and use our link, we get a a little spiff for it. It helps this show. It supports in such a way uh, that it costs you nothing. Just like on Twitch. If you want to subscribe to my channel with Twitch prime, if you're an Amazon prime subscriber costs you nothing, gets me some money and, uh, and keeps me afloat, which is really all we're trying to do at this point is try to stay afloat. I would love to prosper. Wouldn't that be great if I could get out of my own way and prosper, but instead we're settling right now for staying afloat. So if you can do that for me, that'd be great. Use the Amazon link. It's available right now at the Joe business page on Mike Schmidt, uh, Mike Schmidt uh, click through the merchandise page. And there it is right there lurking. Click on the Amazon. And then you're shopping. We get money. They get money. You get stuff and it exists and it makes me happy and it makes you happy. And uh, thank you for supporting as much as you did. We have a sponsor for this show. We always do. It's our good friend, Fearful Jesuit over there at the Paranoid Strain podcast, which is available in the iTunes store. Uh, why wouldn't you go ahead and download that right now? The, uh, the iTunes store exists. It is the Paranoid Strain. Go subscribe. As a matter of fact, you're subscribing to all these other things. Subscribe to him. Subscribe to me. Subscribe to us. Subscribe. Uh, well, I'm, uh, he's not us. I'm not on his show, but the Paranoid Strain podcast exists. Now, last month, the previous show was about assassinations. Well, this month's show, and I told you about it last week, uh, it's about the JFK assassination. And it is, it is fucking information dense. It is, it is a guy leaving no stone unturned, including the stone that was thrown from the grassy knoll that exploded JFK's head. That's right. I enter my own entrant into the own uh, JFK conspiracy theory shot by Oswald hit by a rock. That's what happened to Kennedy. You see that part where his head back and to the left, back into the left. Somebody threw a smooth stone so quickly it exploded his head and it made Jackie's pillbox hat unwearable from that moment on baby. Um, you can write our friend, Fearful Jesuit, paranoid strain at gmail.com, the paranoid strain at gmail.com. Is it the paranoid strain at gmail.com or paranoid strain? Fuck. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, now I, you know what? I have it. Fuck. I don't have it written in front of me. Um, is it here? Hold on. Let me find it. I must have it. Where is it? Damn it. The paranoid strain at gmail.com. That's my guess. The paranoid, write him a note. Tell him how much you love the show. Uh, and I don't want to give too much away again. Like I said, when you listen to this episode, uh, first of all, I was blown away. There's actual audio of Oswald. Like I didn't even know that existed and get this Oswald actually got on a fucking television show to debate a guy. I, I mean, they, they, like how, how hard up are they for TV? And we talked about that before. When we said Jack Lane is on there doing fucking high yas in the middle of fucking nowhere, teaching you to do jumping jacks. So they were willing to put basically anything on fucking television, including a nut bag like Oswald who got on TV to debate a guy. Um, but this episode is, is just a tour de force tearing apart the JFK assassination. Like I said, it uses uh, the source material. It uses Bugliosi's book, it uses another book that I don't want to say. Um, whatever. I don't want to give too much away, as I've always said. But uh, here's something. I, I, and listening to the breakdown of that day. Oswald's in the book depository. He shoots Kennedy. He leaves. He goes home. He changes clothes. And then uh, I, 
he goes back out. Why the, why the fuck is Oswald going back out? What are you doing? Why are you going back out? You're home. You made it safe. You've, you've defeated the big boss. You're in a video game. You've defeated the big boss in Kennedy and getting through. You've avoided all traps. You've made it back to home base, to headquarters. Just fucking relax. You know what? Have a sandwich and a cool drink. You just murdered the president. It's okay to just fucking take five minutes off, but no, he throws new clothes on and he heads back out into the world. What the fuck, Oswald? What are you thinking? You made it back to your place. Uh, you've got to listen because you've got to hear Jesuits. He does a lightning round where he, he plays. How do I explain this? You know, the JFK movie by Oscar uh, Oliver Stone. It's funny. Jesuit keeps talking about what a brilliant movie it is and how it's full of complete horseshit. Like he's like, it's it's the most beautifully well-made horseshit he's ever seen in his life. And then he does a lightning round where he plays all of Kevin Costner's closing statement. And then he stops it. He'll like, he'll buzz in and stop it. And then he'll debunk everything that, that Costner says. It's, it's. It's beautiful. I mean, it's just, you know, just this fucking teardown of the entire scene. But I will say this, and this is where I have a beef with Jesuit, because uh, there were three hobos arrested in Dealey Plaza. Okay. And uh, in Costner's statement, he talks about how uh, these three hobos were arrested. And then Oliver, Oliver Stone uh, in the script says they disappeared. And nobody ever sees them again. And in the lightning round, that's where Jesuit buzzes in and and he stops. And he points out the fact that, in fact, these uh, these transients did not disappear. A journalist finds them a year after the movie comes out. Okay, a year after the movie, he finds two of the hobos alive. And uh, and then he finds a sister of the third one because the third guy died. Okay. Now, Fearful says that they were interviewed by a a reporter a a year after the JFK movie comes out as as a way to debunk the the Costner scene. And uh, Fearful Jesuit says that it it was debunked because apparently this reporter got them to admit that basically they really were just hobos. They were just three charangents in Dealey Plaza. They were arrested and they were let go on their... So in reality, they were arrested and let go on their own recognizance. They They didn't disappear. Just nobody ever thought that they were relevant to the story until fucking JFK went ahead and threw it out there. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Oliver Stone threw it out there. And everybody else was like, oh, well, this is, the, ah, these hobos, they disappeared, the disappearing hobos, the magic hobos, like the magical bullet, whatever the fuck. And so Jesuit goes, look, man, they were fucking hobos. It came out a year after. A journalist finds them. Two of them are alive. One of them is dead. He talks to the sister of the dead guy. None of them had any connection. They were all just hobos that were rousted in Daily Plaza because you know why? They took out hobos when the president was coming to town. They didn't want JFK to feast his presidential eyes on filthy hobos in Daily Plaza, and I can't blame them. However, however, folks, in debunking this, Fearful Jesuit actually says the phrase, well, they were hobos. And uh, clearly they had nothing to do with this because a reporter found them and he uh, he talked to them and they had nothing to do with this. And then Fearful says, I'm not going to identify them here by name because they had nothing to do with this. So why should they be dragged in? Well, listen, sir, if you're here debunking any sort of people thinking about a conspiracy theory and yet you refuse to name names, you refuse to name names, sir. I put it to you, fucking fearful Jesuit, that perhaps you are part of the biggest conspiracy yourself. Perhaps you are doing nothing but adding to this conspiracy theory by not naming these hobos. Are, what are you protecting, fearful Jesuit? Let me ask you this. Who are you protecting? Did they get to you, sir? Who got to you? Was it Joe Pesci in a wig? Was it Kevin Bacon in a wig? Was it Kevin Costner in a wig? Was it Oliver Stone in a wig? Was it hobos in a wig? Who in a wig pinned you to the fucking wall and made you fucking not identify these people? sir sir again how dare you how dare you go ahead and not share this if you had this information why wouldn't you share it see all you've done in your debunking is refuse to debunk and so i'm here to debunk your debunking sir i'm here to tell you that there is no way
Fuck you, Schmitty. You don't come to a throne if you're not gonna suck a dick. 